I'm Drew Stevenson, and this lecture is for my professional responsibility class about ABA Model Rule 1.16b, which addresses permissible or permissive withdrawal from representation. Here we're going to be talking about the various conditions or circumstances when it's acceptable or appropriate for a lawyer to terminate the representation and stop representing a client after the representation is already underway. So let's dive in. Model Rule 1.16b says, except as stated in paragraph C, a lawyer may withdraw from representing a client if one, the withdrawal can be accomplished without material adverse effect on the interests of the client, or basically one of the next six factors is satisfied. So two is the client persists in a course of action involving the lawyer's services that the lawyer reasonably believes is criminal or fraudulent. Three, the client has used the lawyer's services to perpetrate a crime or fraud. So that's in the past tense. Note that number two is in the present tense. Four, the client insists upon taking an action that the lawyer considers repugnant or with which the lawyer has a fundamental disagreement. Five, this is about the client not paying you, the client fails substantially to fulfill an obligation to the lawyer regarding the lawyer's services and has been given reasonable warning that the lawyer with, will withdraw unless the obligation is fulfilled. Six, the representation will result in an unreasonable financial burden on the lawyer or has been rendered unreasonably difficult by the client. So sometimes, I hate to say it, you're going to have clients who just won't cooperate or who ghost you. They won't res they're unresponsive to your phone calls and emails and so forth. They won't comply with discovery and production uh, during pretrial uh, uh, discovery. And so you can't get the documents that they're supposed to um, bring forth. And sometimes, even apart from the client not paying fees, a case could present an unreasonable financial burden if the case is going to consume so much, of, much more of your time than you thought, and you're not going to be able to represent other clients. Um, so consider a situation where you agreed initially to take a case pro bono, and now it has gotten very complicated and time-consuming, and it, um, you're not able to take um, to provide representation to clients who would actually pay and you have overhead costs for your firm. So uh, those types of things um, are factors under number six. And then seven is sort of our catch-all other good cause for withdrawal exists. Now, I want you to notice something, uh, this sort of a subtle distinction here, but this is very important for purposes of test questions. Paragraph B1 permits a lawyer to withdraw from a representation at any time if the withdrawal will have no material adverse impact on the interests of the client. So at any time and basically for um, any uh, legitimate reason. Now the remaining paragraphs in Rule 1.16b permit the lawyer to withdraw even if there will be a material adverse effect on the client. So watch for this when you get um, questions on the MPRE or your final exam that give a scenario where they're asking, can the lawyer withdraw? And it seems like sort of a silly or whimsical reason, and they just don't like the client anymore, um, or they decided they need a vacation or <laughs> some personal time. If uh, it wouldn't have any Im adverse impact on the interests of the client, then it doesn't matter how uh, what the timing is or how silly the lawyer's reason might be. And on the other hand, you might get a hypothetical where it's really going to be prejudicial to the client uh, to, for the lawyer to withdraw, but it, the circumstances satisfy two through um, factors two through seven of 1.16b, in which case, again, it actually doesn't matter if it adversely affects the interests of the client if one of those other conditions applies. Now, I do want to mention 1.16c very quickly. Um, it, which says a lawyer must comply with applicable law requiring notice or permission of a tribunal when terminating a representation. And when ordered to do so by a tribunal, a lawyer shall continue representing not, representation notwithstanding good cause for terminating 
the representation. So keep in mind, this is fairly rare that a judge will um, force a lawyer to stay on a case when a lawyer wants to withdraw and or a lawyer has good reason. But if uh, if you have a matter that's already pending before a judge, it's already been assigned to a judge, and maybe it's on the eve of trial or it's during a trial, the trial's already underway and the judge wants you to finish the trial out and to not disrupt the trial, um, the judge has authority to force you basically over your objection or the your client's objection to finish a trial, essentially. Also, keep in mind that a court may request an explanation for why you're withdrawing. And in that situation, the lawyer should try to protect the client's confidentiality when you're giving the explanation. Uh, frequently, it's enough for the lawyer to say something like professional considerations require termination of the representation. It, sometimes th there's an, um, a, a situation where you could explain it and it wouldn't really be anything confidential about the client or the court already knows uh, that the client has been, let's say, threatening the judge or something like that. But there are situations, let's say, where the client isn't paying your fees or isn't being cooperative. And the fact that you're withdrawing is not an excuse to gossip about your client to the judge. So keep that in mind. That concludes our lecture about Model Rule 1.16b. In the next video, we'll talk about duties that a lawyer has to a client even after the representation has been terminated under Model Rule 1.16d.